My name is Scott Douglas. My name is Scott Douglas. You sound just like me. You sound just like me. You look just like me. You look just like me. One of us has got to die. One of us has got to die. Yes, but which one? Which one? Theater 5 presents Molecule Masquerade. Darling, you home? Vera, you in here? Didn't you... Scotty! Oh, my darling! Oh, Scotty, what? Scotty! Oh, Mary, for heaven's sake, what's the matter? Oh, when did you escape? How, how did you get away? Escape? Get away? W would you mind Shh. telling... Shh, quiet. I think I heard someone. Just a minute, darling. Now we can talk. Oh, Scotty, I couldn't understand what had happened to you. I was so worried. I couldn't believe it. Mira, what are you talking about? Then you didn't kill the man in the blue turban in Cairo? Cairo? When? This morning. <laughs> Look, darling, there's no plane fast enough to fly me from Cairo, Egypt, to New York in that time. Well, Scotty, it's the truth. I'll show you. It's all over the front pages of the newspaper. Here, see? Look at the headlines. Yeah. And, and the story. And your picture, too. Go on, read it. Right. American intelligence agents in a daring action in Cairo, Egypt today captured Scott Douglas, an official of the U.S. intelligence section, as the chief criminal behind a worldwide black market operation. If it killed a man wearing a blue turban? You see, darling, it's true. Not only in the papers, but all day on the TV news. I've seen you being taken by the police to the airport. I tell you, this isn't true. It's not me. Look, call my office. I ask the chief what this is all about. They know you've escaped. They'll come here and, and, and they'll capture you again. They won't do any such thing because none of it's true. Now, call him. I'll listen in on the extension. All right, Scotty. All right. Mr. Enright, please. Hello, Mira. I was rather expecting your call. Mr. Enright, I can't understand it. I just can't believe it. Well, there's no doubt of it, Mira. But how do you know? Looks and talks like Scotty, wearing Scotty's clothes, carrying Scotty's wallet, and with your picture and his private papers in it. Small birthmark on the left arm, same blood type, same fillings in the teeth, and the fingerprints are exactly Scotty's. And to top it all off, Mira, I talked to him by phone. I'm... I'm sorry. I... I see. Thank you, Mr. Enright. Oh, uh, just one thing more, Mira. Scotty mm -hmm. is due to land in about three hours. I'll send someone over in a while to pick you up. Thank you. Thank you. It's unbelievable. It's fantastic. Mira, I... Who I, are I... you? Who, Who are, are you? I... Yes. I'm your husband. I'm Scott Douglas. I'm going to call the police. No, stop it. I am Scotty. Look at me, Mira. I am your husband. No one can fool you. Look at me. Good Lord, Mira. Look, look, look. look. Here's, my, here's my wallet. Now, there. There's your picture. And, and look at... Look at this birthmark on my left arm. Now, nobody could fake that. And, and fingerprints? I'll give you all you want. Have them checked any way you want. I am Scott Douglas. I am your husband. Then who is the other man? <laughs> What is it? Plane from Cairo with Douglas aboard coming in, sir. Bring him in the moment he arrives. Yes, sir. 
Uh, would you like a drink, Mira? Uh, no, thanks. Well, here they are. All right, men. Outside. Leave Douglas with me. Right, sir. Hello, Scotty. Chief. Hello, Mira. Hello. I'll, um... I'll leave you two alone for a while. Thanks, Chief. I'm glad you're here, Mira. I was wondering if you would be. Were you? Mira, darling, you're so cold. Don't you want to talk to me? I don't know. Well, it... It's all been a terrible shock to you. I, I, I hardly know what happened myself. The last few days are a blur. All I remember is a, a, a hotel room in Cairo, a man with a blue turban, the police. I, I panicked. There was a fight, a shot, the arrest, the black market talk. I don't know what it means. Mira, you, you look so strange. For heaven's sake, what's the matter? Don't touch me. They don't touch you. I'm your husband. Oh. Oh, darling, don't do Darling. I can't pretend. You're not Scotty. You're not. I'm. I'm not Scotty. Amira, stop this hysteria at once. This is crazy. Let me. Let me see your wallet. My. You mean this? Yes. Oh, here. There it is. Your picture. And where did we go last summer? To Paris. For two weeks. We stayed at the Georges Saint. What did we do when we first got there? <laughs> we opened the window and sang a silly song about Paris. We made it up as we went along, and... And then I kissed you. We were alone. No one could have seen... I don't know how you know these things. No. You <laughs> seem to be Scotty, and yet you were home. Mira. But I, I, I was on the home. plane. You saw that. I, all, all right, honey, if you say... Oh, take, take, take it easy, honey. Don't cry. I've got the reports from Cairo, Chief. Give me the highlights. The man in the blue turban was Mustafa Cornelius. He made his living selling pictures and art. Well, what was he doing in Scotty's room? Probably picking up some pictures. And Scotty said he doesn't know how they got there. Even when we showed him Egyptian police reports that he and Mustafa had been followed. And Scotty was carrying pictures. Oh, so he was lying. No, he wasn't. His lie detector test came through 100%. I didn't know that. And why was Scotty in Cairo anyway? He had no orders to go there. Well, how did he explain that? He didn't. He said he couldn't remember. <laughs> it sounds like two other guys. That's not so funny. What do you mean that's not so funny? When Scotty got off the plane, I left him and Mira together. I listened to their conversation over the intercom. Oh? Learn anything? I don't know. Mira seemed to doubt it was Scotty. Now, wait a minute. It was Scotty. You and I know it was Scotty. Now, why wouldn't Mira know it was Scotty? I don't know. Two other guys, huh? Well, we know that the Scotty who got off the plane is safely locked up in this building. You and I are going to see his wife and try to figure this puzzle out. Come on. Answer, Chief. Try knocking. Oh, hello, Mr. Enright. Hello, Chief. Scotty. I don't know how you did it, but escape. I didn't escape, and I've never been to Cairo. I don't know what's going on, Enright, but I'm glad you're here so this whole mess can be cleared up. All call headquarters. Yes, sir. Now, don't move, Scotty. Scotty, you and I have been friends for ten years. What kind of a game are you playing? It's not a game. I don't know what this is all about. All I know is... You'll get it all straightened out in just a minute. Chief. Yes? They uh, say Scotty is still there. In his cell. What? Get them to put Scotty on the phone. Yes, sir. We'll get to the bottom of this pretty quickly now. That's right. Come on. Yeah. 
Chief wants to talk. Here he is, sir. Keep him covered. Hello? Yes, Chief. Is that you, Scotty? Yes, sir. I just wanted to be sure. Chief, what on earth is going on? You don't have to talk to me to be sure. Okay, Scotty. Scotty? Well, who are you talking to? To Scott Douglas, who got off the plane from Cairo this morning. But I'm Scott Douglas. Chief, have you seen Mira? I want to talk to her again. Just hang on a moment. Now, just repeat after me. I'm Scott Douglas of Intelligence. Well, now, look, you know... Oh, all right. I am Scott Douglas of Intelligence. Okay, let's hear you say that. Jeep, are you crazy? Say what I tell you. I am Scott Douglas of Intelligence. You sound exactly alike. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. And you're coming along with me. What are you going to do? Mrs. Douglas, I'm going to take you and your husband to meet your husband. He's out here, Chief. Bring him in. Mira, Scotty, you stand over there. All right, Chief. Now, once and for all, tell me. Mira. Oh, darling, I'm glad... Good Lord. Mr. Enright, I can't believe it. It's absolutely incredible. He looks just like me. What is this? Chief, Have is... either of you two ever seen each other before? Every morning in the mirror. What kind of a gag is this? One of you two is an imposter. I will say this, the resemblance is fantastic. You, the one we had in the cell, we've got your fingerprints... Teeth identifications, birthmarks, and so on. When you were arrested, they all verified that you are the real Scott Douglas. I've told you that all along. I'm Scott Douglas, Chief. Whatever is we'll going... We'll know who you are in a few minutes. We'll have the results of the fingerprint and identification check we had you take before I brought Scotty up from his cell. Yes? I've got the report, Chief. Well? Fingerprints, teeth identification, birthmarks. Everything checked, sir. They're both Scott Douglas. All right. Now, remember, don't interrupt me. The only way I can tell you two apart is by the clothes you're wearing. You, you're wearing a tropical suit, the one you had on when we picked you up in Cairo. Yes, sir. I'm going to call you Tropical. And you, with the Tweed, that's your name, Tweed. Right, Chief. The last two hours of questioning reveal that your two memories are identical up to four days ago. Whatever intimate and family questions you were asked separately, you both answered the same. But as of four days ago, the police interrogators report that you, Tropical, are almost blank until the arrest and murder in Cairo. That's right, sir. On the other hand, you, Tweed, you have a clear memory except for a few hours three days ago. Here, let me read it. Pursuant to file 198, I was ordered to visit a Mr. David Eintner, suspected of dealing in black market paintings at 569 West 18th Street, and pose as a buyer of rare paintings. Mr. Eitner conducted himself in a reasonable and normal manner and exhibited several paintings, allegedly genuine old masters. During our conversation, I heard a faint oscillating sound in the room and inquired whether it was the air conditioning unit. And then I blacked out. Now, at this point, your two memories separate. You both remember everything up to the moment Scott Douglas blacked out. But after that, Tweed's memory does not pick up until about two hours had passed. Then he reports, The next thing I knew, I awoke lying on the floor. Subsequent police investigation failed to reveal any trace of Mr. Eitner or his paintings. So there it is. And you, Tropical, you remember nothing for the next several days until we picked you up in Cairo. I remember that report very well. I wrote it. But he couldn't have known about the first part of that report. I went alone. No one else. I was there. And that is my Stop it, you two. It's bad enough seeing double without you two talking double and remembering double. <sighs> two hours. Two hours. What happened in those two hours? Chief, I've got an idea. What is it? Probably nothing to it after three days, but why don't we visit 569 West 18th Street again? Let's see whether Mr. Eitner possibly left something behind when he fled with the paintings. <laughs> This is the place. Now it's 
pretty empty now. This is where he had several old paintings hanging on the wall. And this is where I was standing when I blacked out. That's right, Chief. I walked over there from here, and then it happened. What's that? That sound? Came from over there. That closet. Come out of there. Come on. Come on, or I'll shoot. Do not shoot, Sahib, please. Who are you? Do not kill me, Sahib. Talk. I, I come to destroy the instrument. What instrument? The instrument of Mustafa Cornelius. Sahib, please. The man in the blue turban. I swear to come back and destroy it if he ever dies. It is built into the closet. It makes Mustafa and me very rich. Let's see that instrument. Open that panel. Looks like a control board. What does it do? I do not know the words to describe it. Only Mustafa knew. Do you know how to operate this? Yes, Sahib. Mustafa, show me. Show us what it does. Uh, give me something. A picture, perhaps. There are no pictures here. But then a ring. A watch. Perhaps a shoe. Anything. Does this make any sense? I'll play along with him. Here. Here's the ring and a watch. Yes, thank you, Sahib. I place them in here and close the door. I turn on the instrument. That's the sound, the sound I heard. He's right, Chief. The sound before I blacked out. Now what do you do? A moment, please. Ah, it is finished. Now, you see. There are now two watches. Two rings. Let me see them. Oh, they're exactly alike. He, even to the scratches. The, the dirt marks, everything. Let me see them. The right. Identical, perfect copies. No, no sign. Mustafa say all are original. Chief, look at this marking. Molecular duplicator. What did you say? Molecular duplicator? That's right. That means that somehow the molecules and atoms of the originals are perfectly duplicated. And we know that if somehow the atoms and molecules could be exactly arranged, you'd actually have two originals where only one existed before. Yes, Sahib. That is what Mustafa say. Does this machine work on living things? Dogs, birds, human beings? It has worked on a dog, Sahib. Mustafa... He had a dog. He liked so much, he made himself another dog like it. Uh, but the dog, I do not know which one of them. Uh, the dog, he died. Very horribly, Sahib. What do you mean, died horribly? One day, about a month after the first dog becomes two dogs... One day, the dog, he bark and whine. It is an agony, Sahib. And before my eyes, it... I, I do not know how to say. It is... Disappear. Slowly. As if it fall apart. What? And in a little while, there is nothing left. Nothing. Molecular disintegration. On living flesh, the effect of the machine lasts only a limited time. Chief, one of us has got to die. One of us has got to die. Yes. But which one? Which one? Uh, the way I understand it, uh, this person came into your home and stole all of your radios. Every radio I had to my name. Mm, including transistors? Yes. Well, he left me one earplug. I'll say that for him. Mm -hmm. Well, did he take anything else? Just the radios and a couple of pieces of fruit. I see. Well, what... A uh... banana and two cadota figs. Mm -hmm. I well... don't deny him the fruit. No. Are you and your husband going to replace the radios? Well, we'll have to. Arthur is late for work because he has no radio to keep reminding him of the time and traffic conditions. Mm -hmm. I have nothing to keep me company while I work around the house. I can imagine. We have a ten-room house. 
We had a radio in every room. Uh, then he stole all ten radios. Eleven. Eleven. He also stole the car. <laughs> Presented Molecule Masquerade, written by Sherman Dreyer and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, George Petrie, Vicky Bola, Louis Van Ruten, Peter Fernandez, and James Monks. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. <laughs> Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. <laughs> <laughs>